Mother came back and opened. <laughs> they just wanted to see if you were serious. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it opened as soon as you walked away. <clears throat> Ready to go. Uh, just about, yep. Yeah. You like this? Static electricity or something. Universal party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's probably where it's worth sometimes. That's right. <laughs> Calling to order the Monday, October 3rd, 2016, regular meeting of the Berkeley City Council. Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll? Here. 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 The first order of business this evening is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Move to approve. Move to approve by Council Member Kadekel. Support. Support by Mayor Pro Tem Baker. Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll? Yes. 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 I see we have Pastor Matt Brunner with us this evening. Would you please stand for the invocation? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we just come before you on this gorgeous day in October and uh, thank you for this opportunity to come um, together uh, to uh, better serve our community. And uh, so we ask that uh, as the school uh, has started, it's ended its first month, that you would still uh, protect the kids and um, provide a good education for them and uh, through, the, through the rest of the year. And uh, Father, we thank you for the fact that you've given us this wonderful country um, and, and the good state of Michigan and the uh, beautiful city of Berkeley. So I just ask that as we spend this evening together that you would guide our conversation, guide the discussions, and guide the decisions that are made tonight so that we could better our community and uh, better the world around us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we come to the citizens' comments portion of tonight's meeting when you may present your thoughts on issues not included on tonight's agenda. Council members will not engage you in discussion. If your concern needs to be addressed by a member of city staff or a department of the city, please leave your name on the uh, form provided at the clerk's desk. You may speak on a specific agenda item when it is being discussed. When an individual has completed their comments, we ask that you refrain from gestures of approval or disapproval, because that can be intimidating to some residents. When you come to the microphone, please state your name and place of residence. And after all that, nobody come to, well, we have somebody. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Lisa Martin, and I live on, or at 2663 Robina Avenue. Um, I just would like to uh, express my displeasure with the blockage of the street <laughs> at 12 Mile. I understand there's a purpose for it, that it's supposed to be evaluating traffic flow patterns. Um, and so I just would like to tell you that I know that there are businesses at that corner that I frequent, and um, I just was wondering what the impact would be on those businesses to have a, a plaza there, because I know there's parking that happens right on Robina for the alterations store on the corner. And um, anyway, that's just my two cents. Thank you. And now we are ready to move on to the consent agenda. Ms. Boucher, would you please read the items on tonight's consent agenda? Approve of the minutes. Matter of approving the minutes of the regular 36th City Council meeting on Monday, September 19th, 2016. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Motion support. To approve by Councilmember Stedman with support by Councilmember Blanchard. Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll? Ravlin? Yes. Beckel? Yes. Stedman? Yes. 
Turbrack? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Woodwire? Yes. And now we come to the regular agenda. Ms. Boucher, would you please read item number one on tonight's regular agenda? Recognitions, presentations, matter of any recognitions or presentations from the consent agenda. Seeing none, Ms. Boucher, then we move along to item number two. Motion number M7416, matter of authorizing the Berkeley Huntington Woods Youth Assistance to conduct a snowman shuffle 5K run walk and family fun run on Saturday, December 3rd, 2016 from 7 a.m. to 12 noon. The 5K run walk will begin at Hurley Field and a fun run to take place on the track. Is it a motion to approve M7416? Motion, motion to approve. approve. Move to approve by Councilmember Terbrack with support by Councilmember Blanchard. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Yes, I'd like to abstain from this vote as I'm a board member of this organization. Without objection, Councilmember Cadetel can abstain. Mr. Baumgarten. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, you have in your packet the application materials from the uh, Berkeley Huntington Woods Youth Assistance. Uh, they want to do a 5K. Uh, they've gone through the regular application process, and uh, Chief, St Chief Eschman is here to uh, talk a little bit about their application process. We have a representative from the organization. Everyone knows Betty Smith. <laughs> okay. make Betty work tonight. Of what we got. Okay, go okay. All right. The event will start at Hurley Field. The actual 5K run walk will go west on Oxford to Elwood, south on Elwood to Cambridge, and east on Cambridge to Gardner. Well, they make a U turn. And go back and again <clears throat> end at Hurley Field. The participation fees uh, contributed by the uh, people in the run uh, will fund uh, a charitable effort, specifically the Summer Youth Camp Program. And I'm sure Betty will talk about that. Uh, the necessary paperwork has been submitted, they are tax exempt, and the proper insurance has been obtained. The Department of Public Works will provide cones uh, as necessary. Volunteers from the organization will assist along the route with traffic and safety. Uh, and of course, public safety department personnel will be present to monitor. We recommend uh, approval of this. Thank you. <clears throat> I guess I'm just here to answer any questions you might have. <laughs> well, Betty, everybody wants to know what a snowman shuffle is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we start out with a fun run our, around the track a couple times, and we have a snowman that leads that. And uh, it would behoove pe people to dress up like snowmen if they'd like to. We have some fun music going on, and this is basically um, geared towards the kids. And of course, there are big kids too. And so, um, and then right after that, then we have our 5K run, which starts um, at Hurley Field and goes the route that uh, Chief Ashman just told us. And uh, we did very well last year for our first time, and we didn't start nearly as early as we did this year. Um, so we're hoping that that happens again. And we had a wonderful starter last year. He happens to be sitting right here looking at me. And we would certainly appreciate it unless he has something else on that Saturday on the 3rd of December that he would be do well. It was a fun thing. I, I think that, um, and also we had Mr. Blanchard was there, Mr. Kadekel. We had, a, we had a nice turnout and I'm hoping we do it again this year. We send kids to camp in the summertime, which is our biggest expenditure. This year we're talking about the number 100. Wow. And we work with each child to make sure that the camp that they go to is something that would benefit them and the family. It's not, you know, this is where you have to go. And um, that's about all I can tell you if you'd like more. I'll entertain any questions. Any additional questions for Mrs. Smith? 
Mayor Pro Tem Baker. Uh, thank you, Honor. Not so much a question, just um, a compliment. Thank you for, for such a great uh, event last year. I, I can also attest to the caliber of the starter. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. No, that's that's totally fine. Okay. Yeah, and I enjoyed the, the 5K. I actually ran most of it. I'm not a, oh, real, really? I'm oh. Not a good runner unless somebody's I'm sorry. chasing me. So, uh, <laughs> so that, uh, that was a lot of fun. No, it was a great event, and I just wanted to thank you for all that you and the team are doing to, uh, to make that happen. Okay. Uh, and um, I certainly will be uh, obviously in favor of this again t uh, tonight. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. Anybody that else is? want to weigh in on this? Very good. Well, thank you, Betty. Okay, uh, you're welcome. It's a wonderful cause. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're very pleased to support this. Ms. Bouch, would you please call the roll on M7416? Stedman? Yes. Turbrock? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Travlin? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. And now, Ms. Bouch, would you please read item number three? Motion number M7516, matter of authorizing the Knights of Columbus, 2299 West 12 Mile Road, Berkeley, Michigan, to conduct a Tootsie Roll Drive in the city of Berkeley on Friday, October 14th, and Saturday, October 15th, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Is there a motion to approve M7516? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Councilmember Stedman. Support. Support by Councilmember Cadetl. Mr. Baumgarten. Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, this is actually the Knights of Columbus have done this on several occasions. Uh, this is one of those items where throughout the their period that um, may or may not be approved this evening, they would be stationed at various intersections. And when the traffic is stopped and safe, they would uh, solicit donations. This, again, they've uh, applied to the Public Safety Department, and Chief Eshman can give a little bit more information on that process. Okay. The intersections will be Coolidge at 12 Mile and Coolidge at Catalpa. I've discussed this with Matter with uh, Pete Schneider, the organization's financial secretary. All of the proceeds from the event will be given to seven charities. Those charities <coughs> are the Judson Center, JARC of Oakland County, Far Conservatory, Angels Place, Special Olympics, Chamberlain House, and Holy Cross Children's Service. Indisputably, these are very worthy causes, and we're appreciative for this effort. Proper paperwork has been submitted. The organization is tax exempt. The insurance has been uh, documented. Uh, the organization has been conducting this for a decade. Uh, the solicitors are properly trained, and for safety purposes, they wear appropriate uh, vests, yellow vests, so that they can be seen. And in all these years, there's never been an accident or any inappropriate conduct on the part of any of the solicitors. So we recommend approval of this event. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for the Chief? Uh, as the Chief says, this is an annual event, and it uh, goes very well, and it helps some wonderful causes also. Yes. Thank you, Chief. Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll on M7516? Turbrack? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Gravelin? Yes. Deckle? Yes. Stedman? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. Now, Ms. Bowers, would you please read item number four? Motion number M7616, matter of approving appointments, the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, and the Zoning Board of Appeals. Is there a motion to approve M7616? Move to approve. Support. Move to approve by Councilmember Terbrack with support by Councilmember Cadeckle. Mr. Baumgarten. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, you have two appointments placed in front of you today for consideration. Uh, the first of which, Mr. Jason Hensaw, Jason, sorry, Jason Henshaw, I shouldn't have given away my cup of water, um, <laughs> is an applicant for the Parks and Rec Advisory Board Committee with a term expiring July of 2017. Uh, Mr. Stephen J. Allen is an applicant for the Zoning Board of Appeals with a term that expires in July of 2019. Uh, he would be an alternate member to that body. Very good. Everybody has seen their materials in your package. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions, any discussions uh, about any of them, either of them? Seeing none, then Ms. Bowcher, you please call the roll on M7616. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Gravelin? Yes. Cadeckel? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. And now we come to item number five. Motion number M7716, matter of authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with Hubble, Roth, and Clark Incorporated 
555 Hewlett Drive, Bloomfield Hills 48303 to perform professional engineering services for the proposed 2016-17 drainage improvements at Oxford Merchants Park. This expenditure is not to exceed $11,800 and will be charged to account numbers 101-691-974-000. Is there a motion to approve M7716? Move to approve. Move to approve by Councilmember Tarek. With support by Councilmember Blanchard. Mr. Baumgarten. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of council, as you know, we are looking at various options for the Oxford slash Merchant Park property. Uh, we had some gorgeous preliminary sketches uh, presented to us at one of our previous meetings. Uh, first things first, we need to dry that property and make sure it's properly drained. Uh, you have the Director of Parks and Rec, Ms. Teresa McCarlton is here, as well as a representative from Hubble, Roth and Clark. Teresa. Uh, so as the good evening uh, as Mr. Baumgarten said um, we are looking to start the drainage work as everybody knows we have money approved uh, in this year's budget before we can get it started we have to bid it out we have to get a plan we have to do a topographic survey that's where HRC comes in um, we have met out at the property and we'll continue to do so we'll have pre-construction meeting and you see the items that will happen um, we look at the work being done sometime this winter probably December or January and both uh, Mr. Zimich and I are here to answer any questions you may have. Any questions? Uh, Councilmember Blanchard. Thank you, Ron. More of a comment. I'd like to say that uh, everybody knows that we have been on a rotating plan with our parks to improve the drainage because we've had some very big mud holes in the city we call parks for quite a while and we've done a lot of really good things and this is just the next step that needs to be done so we can make good use of the park and our residents can enjoy uh, the park that it will be hopefully shortly so I congratulate the parks department for for doing that and making sure that we have good looking parks through our city so thank you thank you council member Tabrak. thank you mr mayor um you mentioned you know the, the different phases that have to go if you could just kind of give a quick <clears throat> overview of the timeline for uh, for the residents and anybody else interested for the park in total or well, no no just project. just for this project no, right no, yeah, so yes, project. Um, obviously there's coming to you tonight and hopefully getting approval for HRC to start this um, the topographic survey would come next which um, HRC would complete um, in the next like about two weeks um, November we would do a design review meeting advertise for bids receive bids at the end of November and then probably award the project either the first December meeting or the second December meeting and uh, the work would then start after that and probably uh, completed end of December beginning of January does that sound about right Eddie yeah. thank you very good okay. anybody else well thank you Teresa and thank you for being here as well uh, we look forward to um, dealing with that major matter of drainage there at that park and um, it'll be will redound to the benefit of all our residents when this is completed so thank you for bringing it to us Miss Boucher would you please call the roll on M7716 Blanchard yes Ravlin yes Cadeckle yes Stedman yes Turbrack yes Baker yes O'Dwyer yes thank you thank you and now Miss Boucher would you please read item number six Ordinance number 00716, matter of considering the first reading of an ordinance to conditionally rezone property described as lots 306, 307, 308, and the east 20 feet of lot 305. From single family residential district R 1D to parking district P 1, applicant 27799 Woodward LLC. Is a motion to approve ordinance 0716? Move to approve. Move to approve by Councilmember Cadeckel. Support. Support for Council Member Stedman. Mr. Baumgarten. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, this has been a, uh, an issue that the Planning Commission has previously taken up and they send to you a recommendation that is enclosed in your packet. We are joined today by, I believe, several members of the adjacent neighborhood, our Planning Director, Ms. Amy Vanson, as well as Mr. Callis from uh, representing the, um, the applicant. Uh, so I will actually let Ms. Vanson start and give a little bit of background on this project. Good evening. Um, as you know, with rezonings, the Planning Commission makes a recommendation to the City Council. City Council has the final say. Uh, Berkeley City Code requires that the Planning Commission make written findings and submit them to Council, and you have those in your packet. The Commission is supposed to examine five issues in particular. <coughs> one, are, one is the existing uses of the property within the general area. 
the zoning classification of the property, along with the general area around the property, the suitability of the property in question to uses permitted under the existing zoning classification, in this case, single family residential district, the trend of development in the general area, including any changes that have taken place in its present zoning classification within the general area, and finally, the objectives of the current land use plan for the city of Berkeley. Um, you do have the draft minutes. They have not been approved yet because the Planning Commission just met last week. Uh, if you have a, questions for me, I'm here, but you do have my report. Any questions for our Planning Director? Seeing none then, are there any folks in the audience that want to um, give expression to their perspectives? Does the attorney for um, Vincetta Garage want to? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. My name is Tom Callis, and I'm the attorney representing the petitioner, 27999 Woodward, LLC. My address is 31350 Telegraph Road, Suite 201, Bingham Farms, 48025. As Ms. Vanson indicated, we are here this evening to present our rezoning petition. The public hearing took place in front of the Planning Commission. Uh, I presented the argument at that time or the petition at that time. Renderings have been submitted uh, with our zoning application uh, of the site plan for the proposed parking lot showing the number of spaces which will not exceed 46, showing the buffering, the islands, how the parking spaces will be configured, uh, the buffering to the west which will exist of a wall, some landscaping. A wall also is on the southern part of the parking lot uh, with a concrete sidewalk in front of that. Um, <clears throat> and what we are asking for this evening is a resolution or an approval that we believe will resolve the Vincetta parking issues that currently exist. Now, we presented our rezoning under Michigan's Conditional Zoning Act. Now, what that specific statute does, for those of you who are unaware, is it basically binds the developer to what they're providing and what they're offering, that's what they must build. So what we've offered and what we've agreed to provide, which again, you'll find in the parking lot renderings the parking lot site plan and the actual conditional zoning agreement that was drafted and provided contain all the details, all the spec, uh, uh, specifics and the criteria that we're willing to abide by under law in developing this property for parking lot use. Now, as Vincetta Garage currently exists, as you all know, there's been issues with parking, where people park, and the parking lots that are available for use. Currently, for Vincetta, we have 25 parking spots that are on site. We also have an additional Eaton Street parking area that we own, and that provides 17 spots. We currently rent 50 spots from North Point Medical to the north, another 17 spots from the Donut Cutter also to the north. We cannot use, however, we cannot use those spaces until after 5 p.m. on weekdays, and they are available all day on weekends as those businesses are closed, or the North Point is closed, not the donut cutter. So those spots, and we also have a valet service because we just didn't have parking. There was nowhere to park the cars. The residents, as you know, or the, I should say the customers, as you know, were parking up and down the side streets, and we had to create a valet situation in order to take the cars from the customers and take them up to the North Point parking area. And as you all know, or, or just so you're aware, North Point is limited to employee parking and valet customer parking. So the restaurant has proven to be a great success. It's a destination spot. People come from all over, brings people into the city of Berkeley. That's obviously a good thing. However, the parking has been a struggle. And my client is, we met, obviously we've gone through this before, which was denied, so we decided to come in with a different approach. 
just to give the city the comfort level that they need in considering this application. We want you to be fully apprised, not to, do, not to persuade you one way or another, but to know all the facts regarding this development and what we propose to do if approved and what we're actually contractually obligated to do if approved. You have those renderings, you have the site plan. Obviously, I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. So between the lots that we rent and the valet service, we pay in excess of $100,000 a year for these services. By creating this new parking lot on Oxford Street, which will allow for 46 additional spaces, also expanding the Eaton Street parking area, which was rezoned to allow us to do that and which will be done, uh, we will create an additional parking total when all is said and done between the 25 that we currently have We'll have a approximately total 29 to 30 spots on Eaton Street. Again, depending on final site plan approval and engineering, we may gain a spot, we may lose a spot. And we'll have <coughs> approximately 46 additional spots on Oxford Street. But again, those are all still subject to site plan approval, engineering review and approval. So there still are plenty of safeguards built into these plans because your engineers will review them to make sure the plans meet all of your requirements, all your engineering requirements, all city ordinances. So when all is said and done, we're hoping to get approximately 100 total parking spaces for our business. These 100 total parking spaces will allow us to get rid of the North Point parking lot and the Donut Cutter parking lot alleviate the financial burden that those two impose on the business and also get do away with the valet service uh, if desired by, by the petitioner because we'll have uh, parking on site now. Now as you know, it's, it's you know, natural tendency, it's, 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 a, it's a customer's natural tendency when they go to a restaurant or a bar, they all look to park as close as they can to the area that they're going to or to the business that they're going to. Well, hopefully by building, we believe at least that by building this additional Oxford parking lot, by adding on to the Eaton Street parking lot, that will provide all the parking necessary and the existing 25 spots on site, we'll have all the parking necessary for our customers. It'll all be within walking distance of the restaurant and will alleviate all of the parking that's taking place on side streets and, and up and down the alleys in these lots that we are renting. Um, your master plan, as you know, uh, you know, looked at the Woodward Corridor. Excuse me. Look, <laughs> I'm with you. Uh, I also uh, uh, get uh, dry mouth here, but anyway. So the, uh, the, the master plan has acknowledged to a certain degree along Woodward that as the areas expand and as the businesses expand, that it's highly visible that parking located between the buildings and Woodward Avenue or enjoy near street frontage with parking in the rear. So this isn't something that is unusual in the city. Uh, in fact, many businesses along city thoroughfares, whether it's 12 Mile, whether it's Woodward, uh, other thoroughfares, have businesses located on them fronting the major roads. And in the back of those businesses, as you know, is residential. And their residential is buffered by walls, screening walls, landscaping, which is what we're also proposing to do as shown in the site plans uh, and the renderings. As you can see in the colored renderings, you'll see what the parking lot will look like when it's constructed, looking at it from an easterly view and looking at it from a westerly view. In addition, what the client has proposed to do with respect to lot 304, because only half the easterly half of that is going to be rezoned, um, they're going to build a new house. There's a house on there existing on 996 Oxford Street. Uh, we are in the process of securing a demo permit. In fact, I believe we may have already secured it. That house is going to be demolished. A new, brand new house is going to be constructed on that lot. That is a condition that we agreed, that it's a condition we imposed upon ourselves in the conditional zoning agreement. And it's a house that will be built by the client. So, um, you know, with that being said, we, we, we really believe, we honestly believe, and, and keep in mind that, you know, it's in our best interest to alleviate the parking issues. It's in our best interest and the city's best interest to have a uniform, systematic parking system that will allow customers to visit Vincetta from all over, not just from Berkeley, 
park in an area that's safe within walking distance of the restaurant and take all of the commotion, all of the traffic off the side streets, off the alleys going back and forth to the various parking lots and, and valley service. So with that being said, um, I'm here to answer any questions you may have. I really appreciate uh, the consideration that you would be given to our application. And I'm here, any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Callis? <coughs> Council Mayor Kadeka. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I was listening to you and you said the Eaton project will be done, or the Eaton, when? What is your timeline on that? Well, it's been quite a few years. No, it, had, well, it was just rezoned, I think, a few months ago. Um, and then we had to, uh, the city had to get some lot splits done. And we had, obviously, we we're cooperating with uh, T-Mobile, the owners of T-Mobile to the north. So it took a while for us to get our agreements all in place. So it hasn't been a couple of years. It's been very recent. And the Eaton will be developed. Site plan is being prepared as we speak to be submitted to the city for review and approval, uh, engineering review and approval also. Ideally, what we'd like to do is if the Oxford were rezoned, we'd like to, instead of mobilizing, you know, surveyors, engineers, construction crews at two separate times, we'd like to do it all at the same time. For economies of scale, it serves the community better, less uh, interruption, you know, with the construction and all that. And we'd actually like to build them both at the same time. Would be, ideally would be what we'd like to do. That would be the ideal situation, I understand. But if, let's say tonight, Oxford did not pass. Correct. When do you, what is your timeline for the Eaton project? It's in the process. I know they've secured a demo permit uh, for the houses on Eaton. And I believe it's being site plan engineered as we speak. So. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Councilor Blanchard. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a couple of comments. Uh, my personal belief is that your client has not shown good faith in the past in some of these projects. We have uh, had him come in here and make numerous comments about the council, uh, make promises of things are going to get done. And uh, we had a mud hole over there for quite a while. Uh, we talked to him and talked to him and talked to him and nothing happened. Uh, now you're saying that everything's better. I don't believe that. I have a problem with that. And until I see a functioning Eaton Street parking lot that's built to city specs and has walls and greenery and things that look like I think the city should have, I'm, a, I'm opposed to this. Thank you. Councilman Blanchard, if I may address, I represent the investors. I do understand you've had issues with the restaurant operator. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen the previous uh, Planning Commission hearing, City Council hearing on, on you know, your live stream. And that is not the way I approach things. I was hired by the investors of this property to proceed with a rezoning. I can, I can assure you that when I tell them to do something, they do it, okay? And the intention is 100% to cooperate with the city to build these lots, to alleviate the parking issues that exist, to, to get rid of the $100,000 a year that we're spending and put that money into these parking lots and into the business to improve the business, improve its functionality, and keep it as a thriving business here in the city. It benefits the city and it benefits us, obviously, to be able to do this and to keep this business operating, you know, and without complaints, obviously, from the city, from the council members, from the police chief, from the fire chief. So I can tell you personally, and I've been doing this for 25 years, when I tell them to do something, they will do it. Otherwise, I do not represent developers who don't do what they're supposed to do. Okay, the prior representation were the restaurant operators. That's a total separate issue. So. Very good. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Baker. Uh, thank you, <clears throat> and thank you for, uh, for being here tonight and for your inf additional information. Uh, I guess three quick thoughts, kind of building on that. I am pleased that uh, at least uh, bringing you onto the team appears to have been a positive step forward uh, on their part, so I'm pleased with that. Um, I was thoroughly uh, impressed with the caliber of the conversation at the Planning Commission. Uh, the dialogue on all sides was uh, was excellent and went through all the different points. I'm sure many of us had a chance to see it either live or on the on the streaming uh, capabilities there. Uh, and um, I was very um, 
impressed with the with the uh, the residents and the comments that they brought uh, to bear. Uh, they helped me in forming my opinion. Uh, I also would like to see uh, the existing initiatives uh, reach a successful conclusion and uh, and demonstrate the uh, the, uh, the continued wise steps that they've made by uh, by bringing you on board. Uh, and then as the as more details um, are prepared for the Oxford and it follows the process to come through planning commission with more details that they had talked about uh, and continuing to engage our residents and the, the neighbors in the, in the thoughtful dialogue. We look forward to, uh, to seeing you uh, here again sometime soon. For good things, hopefully. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Tarbright. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for, for coming here and uh, speaking. I, you know, I share similar concerns um, to my fellow council members. You know, when, when we talked about the Eden Project, there was no, you know, no caveat there that said, yeah, we're going to try to get this rezone, but we're going to hold off until we can try to Correct. get the Oxford thing. It was actually, I, I think all of us were under the impression that it was going to happen, and it was going to be done, and we were going to see, you know, how, how things went in terms of the parking situation, if that improved. Um, I'm, I'm not uh, ready to, to approve another rezoning um, or even really entertain that rezoning right now until I'm comfortable that what, what happened on Eaton has happened. Um, you know, it, it's tough to to try to fix problems. I mean, I know we have a, a parking issue, um, but until we see the result of that separate issue that we have approved and, and we're ready to move forward with sure. and, and happy uh, to work with you on that. Uh, but until that happens, I'm, I'm not comfortable, even though you know doing them at the same time may save some potential headaches. Um, it's, 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 it's a trust factor, I guess, for, for us and between the residents and the council. Um, we've, we've realized that that's very, very important. Sure. And uh, we like to do all we can uh, to try to retain that. And if the same thing works for uh, the people that you're working for. We want to make sure that they say that they're going to do exactly what they said they were going to do once that happens. I'm sure we could engage in conversations moving further. Right. But just so you know that eating by itself still leaves us woefully short. I'm of, not saying that that is going to fix all your problems. Right. That's, not, okay. that's not the case. Yeah. Just, so we're going to do something, let's do that, and then Understood. We'll see what happens. Anybody else in council member Kadek? Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Just, and that's what I was getting at in the beginning. Um, I'm not comfortable either moving to Oxford without finishing Eaton. I said that originally at the original council meeting uh, a few years ago when we originally started mm -hmm. discussing it. No reflection on you. Uh, you sound like you're a person that works in good faith, and I appreciate that. But actions do speak louder than words, and we've been going over and over and over with the Eaton situation. And until that's completed, I have, uh, I'm very uncomfortable about entertaining any kind of thought mm -hmm. in looking into the Oxford situation. But I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and if I may respond, uh, Councilman, two, two thoughts on that, if, if it helps alleviate or ease your concerns, um, I can offer the condition as the investor developer that Oxford will not be built if Eaton is not built, okay, number one. Number two, um, this is a, I understand Eaton Street was rezoned, and we're very grateful for that. It does give us some relief on our parking requirements, not total relief, but some relief. But the petition that is in front of you this evening is a separate petition, so it has to be judged on its merit. Um, so I just would like everyone to know that it should be judged on its merit and not tying in whether or not Eaton Street gets built or not. I can tell you and offer it under the law to bind my client that Oxford will not be built without Eaton being built, okay, to give you that comfort level, okay. And it's binding. It's contractually binding. You can ask Mr. Starin. But this is a separate rezoning petition, and I would kindly request that it be judged on its own merits without attaching <coughs> outside conditions to it that really, legally, you can't do. So. <clears throat> okay. Anybody else? Uh, are there mem any other members of the uh, – are you done, Mr. Callis? I'm done, yes, unless anyone has any well, questions. So. I see residents from Oxford here. They may wish to comment. Good evening, Mayor O'Dwyer, City Councilors, Mr. Baumgarten. I'm Melody Stevens of 1083 Oxford, and I'm here to represent my neighbors, all of whom oppose the rezoning of 960, <clears throat> 972, 984, 996 Oxford, now known as Ordinance 0716. 
is we trust that you watch and attended carefully the September 27th public hearing on this matter. Our comments tonight will be brief. We in here, rather than read the names of everyone on our block, we refer you to our petition in its 100% participation. We support the Planning Commission's recommendation to deny 0716, and we oppose 0716, and we ask you to do the same. Deny the rezoning application because, as Ms. Vanson summarized, all five rezoning criteria support single-family residential homes on Oxford. Deny the rezoning application because current conditions are even less favorable for re rezoning single-family homes to parking today than they were in 2014 when the previous rezoning petition was unanimously denied. Deny the rezoning application because previous reasons for denial are still, if not more valid now than 2014. Deny the rezoning application because parking beyond that which exists in the Woodward District is unnecessary. In addition to over 300 underutilized parking spaces in the corridor, three residential homes on Eaton, 1010, 1036, and 1046 have already been rezoned parking district specifically for the petitioner. Deny the rezoning application because development of parking on Oxford contradicts the master plan and is inconsistent with parking precedents for all other businesses in Berkeley's Woodward Corridor. Deny the rezoning application because the petitioner has repeatedly failed to fulfill and comply with its written and verbal agreements, promises, and obligations to the City of Berkeley and its residents. Thanks to the tireless efforts of the City of Berkeley on its behalf and the resulting collaborative agreement executed in April after nearly two, two years of negotiating, the petitioner is not blocked from developing Eaton. The petitioner is supported. While the City and the, res and the residents have been waiting for the Eaton site plans stipulated in the collaborative agreement, the petitioner has moved in an entirely other direction. At the public hearing, the petitioner's attorney said, we are not going to build Eaton without Oxford. This is not a condition, it's an ultimatum. When asked directly at the public hearing if the situation had changed in any way, the petitioning attorney confirmed that it had not. But then it implied that the shared parking agreement with North Point was tenuous. This is also not the case. As, confirm as confirmed by the lessor, the current agreement between North Point and Carbar is yearly, not monthly, and is valid until June 30th, 2019. During the July 2014 City Council meeting, at which this rezoning was previously and unanimously denied, the petitioner asked the City Council, or asked the Council to be its beacon and promised that if only you'd tell us where to go, we'll follow it. We now ask you to tell the petitioner again. Tell the petitioner that 0716 is denied. Tell the petitioner to renovate or to sell the Oxford properties to a developer. Tell the petitioner it will not be allowed to destroy a second neighborhood. Tell the petitioner to advise the existing parking to, ad to advertise <coughs> the existing parking options and to take down the no parking sign at 1010 Eaton. Tell the petitioner that the Eaton development must commence immediately or be returned to single family residential zoning as stipulated in the collaborative agreement. Tell the petitioner that shared parking is the Berkeley way of doing business as well as the way in which the original business license was approved and the petitioner's other businesses operate. Tell the petitioner a want does not demonstrate a need. That bad business is not good business for Berkeley and that the city's requirements is made clear before the business opened as well as subsequent decisions are fair and consistent. Please follow the Planning Commission's recommendation and deny 0716. The five criteria for rezoning support single family residential homes on Oxford. The conditions for rezoning Oxford are even less favorable today. The numerous reasons for denial of the rezoning application in 2014 are even more valid now. Vote nay on 0716. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Tebrek. Um, since my previous comments apparently are not regarding the specific issue we're, we're talking about now, I have reasons why I am not in favor of that rezoning. So I figured I'd wise well let you know that as well. Um, in the past, we have <coughs> had a number of issues uh, where we've had to rezone 
residential to generally parking as it is um, and where and how far it encroaches on the residential neighborhoods and 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 the, the situation that it leaves and including the number of parcels that we are rezoning um, this would be the largest one um, that I would have voted for and and like my council members I, I take a you know, it's kind of a case-by-case -case basis. We, we have some rezoning issues that I feel one way and others I feel a different way. On this one, um, I'm not comfortable rezoning that many parcels to parking um, at this time. I, I just don't feel like personally right now, based on what we have in front of me and, and just looking at this plan, um, that it's something I am comfortable with. Now, again, I'm, I'm certainly one council member. Um, but. I am not comfortable rezoning that many properties in the residential, especially in that area, to to parking right now. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilor Stedman. Um, I'm also not comfortable rezoning this many lots um, from residential to um, to parking until we have seen some action in some some use of the shared property agreement, the shared parking agreement. Um, I, I, which was in the, is, is originally why the, the Vincetta Garage was turned into a restaurant. And um, so I, c I cannot support this at this time until I've seen um, some real movement on the part of Vincetta Grill to complete everything that they promised to. Mayor uh, Thank you, Honor. Just to amend my comments as well. Um, uh, I mentioned the Planning Commission and then uh, the, the thoughtful comments and feedback from uh, from all of the participants and it's singularly on this particular issue and through that dialogue where all the different criteria were evaluated uh, that I'm also uh, I will be um, I'm not supporting this initiative tonight. Uh, again, the, tr the Planning Commission is a trusted advisor. To us, they study these details very carefully uh, with far more expertise than than I could bring and it's it's my role to to help oversee that in the broader context uh, and as I look at the broader context in addition to the specifics that were described uh, at that session I feel comfortable uh, passing on this at this time and we'll see where things go should they choose to come back to the Planning Commission again thank you thank you are we we're all done <coughs> this item uh, I will not um, rehearse again all that has been said by my colleagues. Suffice it to say that if the past is prologue, then we take a look at a failure of trust to deliver on promises in the past. Um, and therefore, Mr. Attorney, you have a difficult task representing someone with these question marks. Um, the community is pretty well aware, long prior to your arrival on the scene, a history of failures. And um, I am sorry that you find yourself in this, in this uh, difficulty, but uh, I will be voting uh, against this rezoning also. And history has been my guide in that. And when I judge it on its merit, I arrive at a similar conclusion. Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll on Ordinance 0716. Ravlin? No. Deckel? No. Stedman? No. Turbrack? No. Baker? No. Blanchard? No. O'Dwyer? No. Thank you all for being here, and thank you for your contribution to this important discussion. And now, Ms. Boucher, would you please uh, read item number seven on tonight's agenda. Motion number M7816, matter of authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with Plant Moran, 19176 Hall Road, Suite 300, Clinton Township, Michigan 48038 to perform a long-term water and sewer system financial plan and rate study. 
This expenditure will be charged to two separate accounts, 12500 to account number 592-536-818-000 and 7500 to account number 592-536-818-000. Is it a motion to approve M7816? Motion, motion to, to approve. approve. Motion to approve by Councilmember Stedman with support by Councilmember Cadetel. Mr. Baumgarten. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, the, as you know, the Department of Public Works has been working uh, with MDEQ as part of a statewide initiative um, referred to as SAW, which is short for Stormwater Asset Management and Water. Uh, we've been working in this program in order to clean and televise our sanitary sewers throughout the community uh, at a fees reimbursed 90% by the states. Uh, as part of that program, we're now moving on to a, an area where we need to develop a long-term financial model and a rate study uh, for our sanitary sewer infrastructure as we move forward and begin to forecast possible issues with it. Uh, again, that work as the 12500 that you're seeing in front of you, which will also be reimbursed 90%. Uh, what I'm recommending is that the city take a more holistic approach and also uh, fund a water rate study. I've been speaking with uh, Mr. Schuler on this. We and I are in agreement that it would be a, a good method to proceed with. It would help us uh, examine long-term issues, forecast any possible um, changes with the Great Lakes Water Authority, as well as get a good handle on what our capital needs could be in you know, 10, 20 years down the road as we begin to forecast that work. Um, so my recommendation and my request to the council is that they approve this amount as a not to exceed figure of 20,000 in total again with with a 90% reimbursement for portion of that Thank you other questions for our city manager Councilor Blanchard. Thank you. I, I think uh, this is an excellent time to do that based on the changes that we hear from the Great Lakes Water Authority some of the lawsuits that have been going on in other communities uh, over water rates now is the time to study our water rates make sure that everything is done appropriately and that the money is is scheduled to be there to maintain the infrastructure because if you listen to the presidential debates all you hear is infrastructure a lot of times now among <laughs> other things but our infrastructure is old our infrastructure needs to needs to be maintained and we need to make sure that our rate study allows us to set the rates to do that infrastructure work to keep our pipes, both water and sewer, maintain so that we don't have any problems with them in the future. So I think this is an excellent time and, and I really am in favor of it. Okay. Council Member Tebrek. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this current uh, issue also came up at the Roads and Water uh, Ad Hoc Committee of Council that Council Member Blanchard and Council Member Gravelin uh, sit on as well. Um, and. and you know, from, from our discussion there, um, discussions with Derek, and, and as well as, you know, the mayor uh, was also there, it's a, it's a good time for us to do this as, as we look forward um, to, as Councilmember Blanchard said, maintaining our, our aging infrastructure. Um, we have to make sure that we're doing everything in our power correctly uh, to do that. And, and certainly um, with the availability of the SAW grant resources, um, it makes a, it's a very opportune time uh, for us to conduct this uh, this study, so I, I certainly support this um, as a council member, and I also support it as the chair of that committee as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to weigh in on this? <coughs> it seems like you just council another quick comment, Your Honor. I, this was also a big topic at the MML convention. There was a number of sessions on this, and uh, Council Member Stedman and I brought back a bunch of information which we've provided to uh, the DPW for their review on. Uh, what other people are doing. So it's a, it's a time that we have to really study our infrastructure, and I think that those documents will also help us. Very good. It's um, certainly a timely expenditure. So if there's no additional comment on this, then Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll on M7816? Cadeckel? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Gravelin? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. And now, Ms. Boucher, would you please read item number eight? Motion number M7916, matter of appointing Deputy City Manager Darshell Stricken Love to the Public Safety Pension Board with a term to expire June 30th, 2020. Is there a motion to approve M7916? Motion to approve. Support. Motion to approve by Mayor Pro Tem Baker with support by Councilmember Blanchard. 
Mr. Baumgartner. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, we're requesting this appointment. The deputy city manager position handles, uh, well, it really runs point on human resource functions. Uh, this is an appropriate place for Darshell. This is an appropriate board for her to sit on as she'll be working closely with retirees and those uh, pensioners. So it, um, it, it's good synergy with, uh, with her position. So we're requesting approval. Very good. Any questions for the city manager on this appointment? Seeing none, then Ms. Boucher, would you please read, uh, would you please uh, call the roll on M7916? Stenman? Yes. Terbrack? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Gravelin? Yes. Cadeckle? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. And now we come to the communications portion of tonight's meeting, and Councilmember Terbrack is up first. Thank you. Just uh, a couple of quick events coming up in the uh, Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, both of these events are actually also happening at the Robina Plaza. First off, we have All About Science. Uh, that <coughs> on October 5th from 5.30 to 7.30. Again, that's at the Robina Plaza. Come learn all about bugs from the Clinton River watershed and see Dan the Creature Man and all of his creatures. So that's very exciting to see creatures <coughs> there. Again, that is on October 5th. And then a few days later, on October 15th, we will be falling into fun at the Robina Plaza. That is from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, we're going to be gearing up for uh, Halloween. We have some pumpkin decorating, and we'll have cider and donuts uh, and everything fall. I, I think in a, you know, about 12 days from now, we are, we're going to be experiencing some fall weather every day. So makes it a great time to fall into the fun on October 15th. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Gravelin. Uh, first, I'd like to remind everyone the next tree board meeting is next Monday, October 10th, 7 p.m. at the library. Uh, I also attended the past planning commission meeting last week on Tuesday, which had its highs and lows, as many of you in the audience know. Um, they uh, first appointed their board members, reappointed to their positions that they had previously. So Mr. Barnett is, again, the chair of the commission. They addressed the Vincetta issue. We thank you again to all the residents, the residents that came forth and presented your opposition. They, it was definitely well received, and they made every position, every same the commission came to all the same conclusions that we did this evening. All the same comments were made, emphasizing that we need to see more effort on the Eaton properties before we're willing to move forward with anything. Um, it was interesting, the lawyer mentioned our comfort level. I think it took us a long time to get to a comfort level with the Eaton properties, and therefore we've all come to the agreement. We need to see progress there first. Uh, then the conversation moved into the master plan discussion. Um, from from my vantage point there, it seemed there were two different conversations being had. Uh, the citizens undoubtedly were expecting more concrete movement to protect the residential neighborhoods. The Planning Commission, from my perspective, uh, seemed to be taking a more full, comprehensive view of relooking at the master plan. Um, since the meeting, Mr. Barnett has put out publicly a letter saying he, he understands why people are so frustrated and we're going to make greater strides at the next meeting. There will be language put forth to protect the R1D neighborhoods from multifamily consideration in our further master plan. So then we will continue the discussion further to examine the master plan at large and what changes we want to see as a community. So I think that was a great effort on his part to show he's listening. We made, he, the citizens made it very clear that is our first step. So he will go to great lengths and at the next meeting we will see more concrete action. So that was a direct result of your efforts to make sure the Planning Commission has heard your desires. And lastly, it's, it's always good to remember that whether you're up here we, we are elected, not all the boards and commissions are elected, they're appointed by us. So, um, but even if you're an appointed member, you still are in service to the public and sometimes that means taking the heat, even if you think it's unwarranted or you disagree, we still, it's still all of our duties to do that with great respect. As the residents are asked to be respectful to us, we have to show that in return. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Cadet. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Henshaw and Mr. Allen for putting their names forth. Um, Mr. Allen, we have a zoning board of appeals meeting uh, 
on the 20th of this month right here at 7.30. Okay, so I just want to let you know. Um, also, a reminder that this month is Breast Cancer Month, so you'll see me in pink quite often. Um, and I hope everyone takes uh, the proper steps to, to be more aware of this, uh, this situation. A week ago Saturday uh, was a lot of fun. Started out with the 5K race over at Hurley Field with the first responders, then moved over to the Robina Plaza where there were quite a few people for hot dogs and a lot of fun, a lot of kids playing, and then the fire prevention open house and uh, good chili was there, so it was a great Saturday. For all of those that are celebrating the Jewish New Year, it started last night, it's today and tomorrow. It's uh, the year 5777, as a member of the audience asked me earlier. I want to say Lashana Tova. May you have a happy and a healthy New Year and a sweet year. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Baker. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I want to thank, uh, thank you for coming out uh, this evening with your comments on the Robina Plaza. As the liaison to the DDA, it's important to hear the entire spectrum of, of feedback, and I appreciate your voice as part of that dialogue. And, uh, and speaking of voices, I'm sure that uh, Batula Clark had uh, Berkeley in mind when, uh, when she sang. <laughs> yes, I won't actually sing it. Good, <laughs> thank you. The lights are much brighter there. You can forget all your troubles. Forget all your cares. So go downtown. Things will be great when you're downtown. I've got the whole song. I can keep... <laughs> anyway, you get my point. Um, I'm going to talk about the downtown for just a second. Um, uh, we have seen some progress with the uh, Downtown Development Authority, in particular with the Rubina Plaza. Uh, experiment. Um, good feedback so far, and uh, by good feedback I mean quality feedback, right? I want to hear positives and negatives. I want to hear fears, concerns, excitement. Uh, the board is real excited about that, and my comments here are of gratitude to the DDA for their uh, vision and focus to, to begin this experiment so that we can get that input. Uh, thanks to their businesses uh, in that area for their, for their open-minded um, beginnings to this, right? Certainly, uh, as was pointed out, there are some questions about what will this do to, you know, traffic and sales and volume and things, and that's, that's what we want to learn, and we really appreciate their, their working with us on this. Uh, thanks to uh, Teresa and the, and the Parks and Rec uh, team for, for the great programming, as we've heard some other uh, terrific uh, adventures coming up here. Uh, thanks to Derek and the Public Works team for, uh, for the safety barriers and the things that they've put up to help ensure the, that we can do uh, this experiment in a, in a safe and effective way. Uh, thanks to the Chief and the Public Safety team for ensuring that everything's running smoothly. Uh, and again, most of all, thanks to the, to the residents uh, for their input and, and giving this a try, right? This is an experiment to see what could we do to activate our downtown uh, to create something that could live up to, uh, to Petula Clark's song there. <laughs> and as a brief little coda to that song, uh, the DDA has taken another important step uh, forward in uh, posting a job position uh, for a DDA director. So uh, as you may know, and as was hinted at earlier, uh, our DDA board is uh, made up of uh, volunteers who do their best to to help advance our, um, you know, the vision of the city, and uh, and I think they've they've done a fine job, all things considered. Uh, what this opportunity would provide is a full-time resource uh, to day-to-day -day actively advance uh, the needs of our existing businesses, to ensure that and to ensure that all their voices are heard and that their their needs are met, and to proactively reach out to other communities to recruit the kinds of businesses that we'd like to see in our city. Uh, right now, it's somebody shows up with the, with the paperwork, and we dutifully process it, and there they are. And that's fine. We, we're glad that they chose our city. <clears throat> At the same time, we'd also like to be able to, to better understand what the, what the residents in the downtown area would like to see and go out and actively recruit uh, to bring in the kinds of businesses that can help uh, create a, a, this uh, thriving environment. And that's what this role will, will do for us. So uh, those are a couple of really cool things that EDA is up to. And, and I appreciate uh, the city manager's support uh, for helping make all of that happen and, and uh, moving this process along. A lot to learn, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be singing the second verse uh, next time around. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Stedman. I can't follow that. <laughs> no. Um, I have some really nice things to report about the library. First of all, there's a used book sale coming up. 
on Friday, <clears throat> Saturday, and Sunday, March, or March, March. <laughs> um, October 14th, 15th, and 16th. On Friday, it's going to be from 4 to 7, on Saturday, from 10 to 5, and on Sunday, from 12 to 4. This is their biggest um, fundraiser. They make a lot of money. The Friends are a very active group, and they do donate a lot to, to our library. Um, so you can also donate books to that if you don't want to buy any, if you have a lot you want to get rid of, or even one or two, um, you can still donate. Uh, the second thing, and um, I'll go over the press release here um, that Matt Church issued. Berkeley um, Public Library is pleased to join Michigan Libraries for Life and Gift of Life Michigan, along with 150 other libraries across the state for a seven-day campaign to inspire residents to join the Michigan or Organ Donor Registry. Volunteers and library staff will answer questions, provide fun giveaway items, and most importantly, help library patrons sign up as organ, eye, and tissue donors. donors. Berkeley's drive is scheduled to play, take place on Tuesday, October 4th. Sorry for the short notice. <laughs> From 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Berkeley Public Library on Coolidge. Um, this uh, program has been successful because libraries are a trusted source for information and they make it easy to join. So uh, anybody out there who hasn't signed up to be a donor in, our, in a been thinking about it, go to the library tomorrow night and you can do it there. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Blanchard. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> uh, I'd like to report on Saturday's uh, Fire Open House. Uh, some of you may have concerns. Fire Open House is normally on the first weekend or the last weekend of Fire Prevention Week. Ours is a week before that, and the reason for that is that we have to borrow equipment from other fire departments. There's only so much around. Uh, we have a smokehouse where we train the kids on what to do. We put smoke in there, what to do if there's a fire, and how to get out. And we think that's very important, so we borrow that from Troy and bring it down here. But it's the other two weekends, it's already in use, so we do ours a week early. So if you didn't make it this year, put it on your calendar for next year. Uh, probably be the same time. Uh, it was a great success. We had many activities. We had the smokehouse. We had two fire hoses where the kids could shoot water out there, <coughs> two bounce houses, a rock climbing wall, fire truck on display, and <coughs> cotton candy. There was so much cotton candy that the machine overheated about four times. Uh, so I won't say there's a lot of hyper kids running around on Saturday, but there probably was. Uh, the American Legion provided hot dogs, chips, and pop. Uh, we had two demonstrations. Uh, one was of a stove fire, what to do if you have a grease fire on the stove. In fact, we started out with what not to do. Don't throw water on it, and you can see the flame just take off. And the other was a Jaws of Life demonstration uh, to show how we cut people out of uh, vehicles that are injured in accidents. So that was very good. I also like, I want to thank all the volunteers to work that because we had a ton of volunteers, including the public safety officers' wives. They had a chili cook-off, which was very good. I think they had about 10 different kinds of chili there, which I'm sure that Councilman Kadekel sampled it all. Pretty I did. Much. I got most of it. They, one of them ran out before I finished. Uh, good chili. But it, it was very good. So if you didn't make it this year, put it on your calendar for next year. It's normally the week before Fire Prevention Week. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Baumgarten. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a few quick items. Uh, I'd like to mirror Mayor Pro Tem Baker's thoughts on, on Rubina Plaza. We continue to gather feedback from that. Uh, we've set up uh, a section of the website. If you just go to berkeleymish.org slash Rubina, you can send us emails and deliver feedback. I appreciate Ms. Martin's uh, comments on the matter. Uh, I continue, like I said, to get good feedback, and whether that is positive or negative, any, any feedback that comes back to us is, is considered to be good. Uh, you can find the schedule of events on there as well, uh, both what the Parks and Recs are offering as well as the local businesses who are trying to make their space their own as well. So a lot of fun things happening on there. Um, I won't undersell this, but I'm going to be holding my next chat with Matt on there. Not near as fun as, you know, fall into fall. But um, on October 19th at 6 p.m., I'll be hosting my uh, chat with Matt. Um, Ms. Clark did not sing about meeting with the city manager there, but uh, it's, it's a good event nonetheless. We had a great suggestion at the, the last chat with Matt uh, from one of our residents who attended to bring a department head along and, and 
talk a little bit about what that department does. So Mr. Derek Schuler from our Department of Public Works is going to be joining us to talk about all things public works and what they do. Uh, it's especially exciting considering that fall is coming up and everyone's favorite leak, leaf raking season is upon us. So uh, please, I invite everyone to come out and you'll be seeing more information on that moving forward. Uh, the last item, there were some concerns offered at the last ZBA meeting uh, by a group of residents who, who felt as though the building department was not living up to its promises to the residents. Uh, my office is investigating these concerns thoroughly, and we hope to have a report ready for the city council by the next meeting. So nothing, nothing like that ever falls on deaf ears. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Attorney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> at the last council meeting, it seems like many meetings, uh, I've talked to you a little bit about medical marijuana. Uh, the last council meeting, I um, advised the council that our state legislature had adopted a package of bills uh, relating to medical marijuana, and these really were the first legislative enactments since the original medical marijuana citizens initiative was approved by the voters a number of years ago. Um, we anticipated at the last meeting that the governor would was was expected to sign these bills into law and he in fact did. In fact I think it was the day after our <laughs> our our last council meeting the governor did that. So um, what these bills do is they clarify a lot of the uncertainties that were in the law, recall as we had discussed the, the last time previously, uh, at the time the citizens approved the medical marijuana initiative, all we really knew was in some way, shape, or form, uh, medical marijuana usage for, again, medical purposes would, would be allowed uh, in, in some way. Um, but the details were, were were not known immediately, and when they were known, questions arose immediately about what is and isn't permitted. We've had a number of court decisions since then which have interpreted the state law very restrictively and it cast considerable doubt whether any type of medical marijuana businesses such as grow operations, uh, compassion clubs, dispensaries um, were allowed at all. In fact, we took the position that under those court decisions, uh, such commercial medical marijuana businesses were not allowed. Well, that's now changed because these uh, these new laws, these package of, of three bills that the governor has signed into law, uh, now do potentially legalize those those things by creating a state licensing structure, framework, and also by uh, creating a, a local option. There's really quite a bit of resemblance to the state liquor laws where in order to sell liquor, uh, one must obtain a liquor license from the state after obtaining local approval. Same principle here that uh, these commercial medical marijuana businesses will require a state license, but they will only be able to obtain a state license if the city of Berkeley, by ordinance, authorizes these types of businesses. Again, we currently take the position that none of these are authorized. Um, that may continue to be the case, but these are discussions that will have to be had at this level, and we also have, <clears throat> have a couple of planning commissioners in, in, in the audience. It'll be a, a, a subject that the planning commission will be dealing with in the near future, is we decide uh, what is best for Berkeley and should these businesses be allowed at all, and if so, to what extent and where and under what conditions. So we've got some zoning decisions to make, and as I said, these will be the, these discussions will be coming to you soon, so stay tuned. Very good. Thank you. In view of Chairman Barnett's uh, letter last week, 
indicating that he will formally place a draft on the agenda at the next Planning Commission meeting that removes mention of multifamily dwellings in R1D single family districts. May I respectfully request both sides of this debate going forward accept the goodwill of the other. Hurtful accusations have been made, and I suspect some who made them know in their heart that these accusations were false. In the heat of public debate, however, it is still important to realize that when we publicly demean or accuse others, we really make our city look bad. I'd like to appeal to the better angels of our nature. We, we are not combatants. We are neighbors. We are friends. We are family. These titles place an obligation on each of us. Let us agree now to turn over a new leaf, keep as our goal the betterment of our city, and accept that everyone else shares that view as well. It's time to move on, to put this issue behind us. It's time to put Berkeley first. We have a city to run. We have roads to reconstruct, water mains to fix, infrastructure to invest in, services to provide to our residents. There is a reason why Realtor.com ranks Berkeley, Michigan, the 13th hottest housing market in the United States. Let's celebrate that while understanding that it results from 10 to 15 years of careful planning. 75 years ago, some folks fought new bills because they argued, quote, this is a farming community. <laughs> the time and the tide will wait for no one. Change happens, like it or not. It is my goal to help shape change so that it respects the past while creating a future that benefits all our residents in the future. Ms. Boucher, would you please? Uh, this is a motion to adjourn. Move first. to adjourn. Move to adjourn by Councilmember Cadetal or support by Councilmember Blanchard. Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll? Turbrack? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Gravelin? Yes. Cadetal? Yes. Bedman? Yes. O'Dwyer? Yes. The October 3rd, 2016 meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Yeah. Oh, well.